Here we are with the women's shot. We're going to compare two throws. One was a foul, but it was over 20 meters. The second was a saved throw, but it was about 19, 16, so almost a, a meter less. So we're going to kind of look at um, some cues I look at when I'm coaching and then um, kind of the differences between, you know, the two different videos. One of the first things that I like to look at is uh, on the left side, as you're rotating out of the back, is that shin angle. Um, the less the shin angle, uh, the more force is going to push you across the ring. So if we can use our hip and drive out of the back, that shin angle will decrease, thus causing more of an explosion across the ring. Uh, the other thing to look at in this, way, in this frame is the shoulders. Um, the, sh the left shoulder is a little bit down. When that shoulder's down, it's going to cause the athlete to kind of dive into the ring. So later on you'll see kind of a, almost a diving action, um, which speeds everything up. The athlete's not allowed to kind of gather behind the shot necessarily. So try to keep those shoulders nice and level out of the back. Now we see in this clip, the shin angle is not quite as low. Um, the athlete's a little bit more upright. The shoulders are level, which is good, but the athlete will lose a lot of power because they're not getting that shin angle lower and getting that drive out of the back. So, a couple trade-offs there. The next thing we like to look at in the power position is is the shot put behind the hip. So, you can see in this picture even though it's not as far as the athlete would like, the shot put is behind that hip. That's going to create that stretch reflex so that as you come to the front and you block that left side, the shot put's going to be able to stay behind that right hip. And all the forces are going to snap into the shot as the, as, the, as the knee turns and comes around. You can see it's all behind the shot put. In this clip at left for his touchdown, you can see that the ball is even further back. So the athlete is able to create even more rotational force by keeping that ball even further behind the hip. And as you can see, as you go a little bit further, the hip didn't really turn very much. It kind of stayed and slid as opposed to rotating. And so now the ball is ahead of the hip. The last position I like to look at is the finish. Um, the arrow's pointing at that left knee. You can see it is hyperextending. That means that left side is stopping completely. If you can stop that left side completely while the right side continues to rotate, all the force that you've built up over with the wrap in the center is going to go into that shot put. That left side stops, shot put behind the hip, it unravels, shoulders stay level, you're going to get everything into the shot, whereas in the next video we'll see a little bit of falling away and all the force is not going into the shot put. Here we are in the same position, but as you can tell the knee is not hyperextended, the shoulder is not level, that left arm is falling down and away and the ball is almost out of the hand. So once you get to this position you can't really put a lot of force onto the ball because it's almost out of your hand. So uh, we'd like to see that at this point, that knee completely hyperextended, the shoulder is nice and level so as you come around your head is, is level and everything's going in the shot. Unfortunately, in this one, you can see that falling away, and the athlete's not reaching over the toe board and getting everything out of it that they can. Everything's kind of going backwards instead of going forwards.